The names and the stories in this episode have been omitted to protect the privacy of the individuals involved. This is Jocko Podcast number 37 with Echo Charles and me, Jocko Willink. Good evening, Echo. Good evening. And with us tonight, I am honored to have retired Chief Warrant Officer Roger Hayden here with us tonight as a guest. Now, unless you are in the SEAL teams or you were in the SEAL teams, then you likely don't know who Roger Hayden is. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and guarantee you don't know who Roger Hayden is. There is no book. There is no movie. There's no social media. There's no one to Google. And I've talked before about how there's three types of guys in the SEAL teams. The guys that built the reputation that the SEAL teams has. The guys that maintain the reputation of the SEAL teams. And then there's the guys that live off the reputation of the SEAL teams and usually those guys didn't contribute much to it in the first place. But let there be no doubt, Roger Hayden is without question, without question, one of the people, one of the men responsible for building the reputation of the SEAL teams. He did the massive heavy lifting and laid down the foundation of everything that the SEAL teams are in the jungles of Vietnam. And he passed on lessons of combat written in blood that we carry to this day. One of the guys here, Roger Hayden, that truly forged the attitude that makes the SEAL teams what the SEAL teams are. And I'm going to tell you quickly how I first heard of Roger. So I was back, I was a new guy at SEAL Team 1, so it's 1991. And back then, no one re- the SEALs weren't that popular yet, and the old SEAL UDT SEAL reunions were not that big of a deal. They they were just kind of a small little gig, down at down at like the Lions Club or something in National City, real low key. But the only guys, none of the none of the younger SEALs went to them. It was all Vietnam SEALs, maybe a couple World War II guys. And I was down there. I was with my my running mate at the time. My, my, my good friend who's at SEAL Team 1 who I'd gone through buzz with, a guy by the name of Chris. And we were just sitting around talking to some old Vietnam guys. And we were getting pretty fired up. You know, it's kind of, there's, you know, once you pay the $10 fee to get into this gig, there's free beer. So we were, we were a few beers deep, you might say, and we are listening to stories. And, and again, we were new guys. This is 1991. We didn't never been in combat. So we were there to try and learn and about the history and learn about the guys and finally me being young and dumb and pretty well buzzed i asked these two vietnam guys that we were sitting there talking to i said hey who was the most badass murdering motherfucker and seal in vietnam and both these guys looked at me and said roger hayden <laughs> And I remembered that name. And when I actually met you for the first time, you were, I'd met you a couple times, but then when I actually worked with you for the first time, you were a lane grader on a, on a platoon full mission profile. And that's actually the first time I learned, truly understood the, the concept of cover and move, which is a basic tactic, which guys didn't know. No one had taught it to me. This was my second platoon. I'd already been through a workup. I had the idea in my head, but hearing you say it, the way you described it, I said it clicked in my head, and I never forgot it, and I actually wrote about it in the book, Extreme Ownership, and it's what I taught to all the SEALs that when I was putting through training, that's what I taught them. One of those fundamental tactics. And so that's kind of my my introduction to Roger Hayden. So Roger... I know you've actually literally never done an interview before, and I want to thank you for coming on. It's it's a true honor to have you on the podcast, so welcome. Yeah, Roger Hayden here. Thanks, Jocko. Really appreciate it, and you're one of my heroes, too. Different environment, different times that you uh, kicked ass and took names, too. The, um, 
I wasn't. I was uh, just one of the boys in the uh, in SEAL Team One when I got there and uh, deployed a couple of times with them. And uh, our environment was the jungle, and we got pretty good at it. And uh, went out and hunted the bad guys. Nobody else in Vietnam, as far as I know, Army, Marines, <clears throat> or any of them would go out at night. They would usually hold up in a base camp or somewhere like that. While we figured night times when they move around, that's when we're going to move around and see if we can find these guys and take them out. And that's what we did. It isn't um, <clears throat> one guy. It's a team effort. Everybody works hard. I had some great, great buddies of mine that were... Uh, I mean, my gun partner was a stoner guy, and I was a 60 guy. Between the two of us, he shot a thousand rounds a minute, and I had a five five. I mean, a seven six two. My 60. It uh, worked out well. Last platoon I was in, we carried four 60s and five stoners. Good. And Lord. if you didn't carry a stoner or a 60, you carried a 16 with a 203 on it or XM 148. But for back in the day, guys. Say those numbers again of how many guys were carrying 60s and stoners. <clears throat> Four of us were carrying 60s. And uh, five guys carried stoners out of a 14-man platoon. Yeah. That's what we operated. <laughs> so for those of you civilians out there that are listening, that's a lot of firepower. Yeah. That's, that's the way you bring the thunder.